Kamehameha! Hey, I gotta cross-promote, you know. A new challenger has appeared in the 10th episode of the all-new Mighty Morphin Rangers. So here we are. Believe it or not, I am amazed we're here already. It still feels like I just started this. But I know this is what everyone has been looking forward to, for good reason. The introduction of a sixth ranger definitely shook up the status quo of both shows. In terms of adaptational interest, it's what left the biggest impression on me. That's why I devoted so much time to it in my original videos. This moment shaped both franchises for decades to come. For Zhu Ranger, it was the start of a grand tradition that continues to this day. A late team addition who stands out from the core cast by way of different fashion and techniques. In the case of Power Rangers, it was in introducing the character of Tommy into the Power Rangers universe. It's hard to argue that Tommy has become one of, if not the, most popular, most well-known, and longest-serving Power Rangers in the history of the franchise. He has been used to adapt numerous Sentai characters, of which Zhu Ranger's Dragon Ranger Burai is just the first. So while their stories run somewhat parallel here at the beginning, Tommy and Burai are ultimately going to have very different trajectories, as we will see. The introduction of the Sixth Ranger is the largest storyline each series has attempted to this point. Zhu Ranger is no stranger to multi-episode stories. It opened with a trilogy of two-parters that could be said to loosely form an introductory story arc. Together they establish the characters and threat, then build up their arsenal of weapons and giant robots. But each two-parter was relatively self-contained. Zhu Ranger has never done a six-episode story like this before. And we've seen Power Rangers struggle horribly to adapt those early episodes by refusing to create multi-part stories until now. So even though Power Rangers shaves this down to five parts instead of six, that's still a huge leap into serialized storytelling. Once the typical pattern had been established, resulting in overall less to talk about, I shifted to covering two pairs of episodes per video. Well, this more or less shatters that concept, so I am returning to my original format for a while. I want to be as detailed as possible here. For my look at these two stories, I'm going to compare individual episodes as well as the story arc as a whole when I'm finished. While there will eventually be some shuffling around on the part of Power Rangers to fit six episodes into five, these early installments correspond exactly to their Japanese counterparts, which makes things easy for me. So let's go ahead and look at the first episode. The DVD release gives each of the Power Rangers episodes a subtitle. In this case, it's Out of Control. But those don't appear in the episodes themselves. The very basic gist of both episodes is pretty similar. A green-colored ranger with a golden shield arrives on the scene. However, rather than presenting himself as an ally, he proceeds to attack. In fact, he totally wipes the floor with the heroes, and they're left to figure out what to do next and who this guy even is. So, who even is this guy? as far as the introductory episodes establish. Burai does not appear much in this first episode. In fact, most of the sixth hero revolves around whether or not he'll be revived. His evil nature is the shocking reveal at the very end of the episode. Ryota, the child who was attempting to awaken him, and who alerts the other Zhu Rangers to his presence, describes him as an all-around great guy who would come to live with him and his grandfather in the Gnome Forest, and who likewise sealed himself away when he heard the other Zhu Rangers had done the same. Besides wanting to see his friend again after millions of years, Ryota believes that Burai is the only one capable of defeating Bondora. However, he can only be awakened on June 19th. Garfield's birthday? No, it's the anniversary of the day he was sealed in the first place. It's also the date this episode originally aired. That time crunch is why Ryota is determined to awaken Burai, despite lots and lots of resistance that we'll get to in a minute. However, as I've mentioned, it turns out that Burai is not at all like Ryota remembers, and wants nothing more than to beat the ever-loving crap out of the other Zhu Rangers, and then, you know, leave before finishing the job, because evil is kind of stupid sometimes. The basic idea here is that Burai is introduced as a mystery. We don't know why he is the way he is, we don't understand why Barza and Gnome are so violently opposed to his resurrection, we don't know how he became a Zhu Ranger, and quite frankly, I don't think we ever do. That's always been kind of weird to me, he just is one. Basically, we go through this episode with the exact same knowledge that the Zhu Rangers have. They're swept up in this whole thing trying to understand it. Everyone else around them knows far more of the story than they do. This is also true in Green with Evil. 
The Power Rangers are completely in the dark over all the terrible things that are happening. But unlike the sixth hero, we, the audience, are treated to the broader perspective. We know everything from the very beginning, and the intrigue is seeing them slowly piece the puzzle together. Shifting a moment to the overall narrative, the Rangers are without the necessary information for far longer than their Zhu Ranger counterparts. This leads to a far different story structure. Neither one is inherently better than the other, but it does mean the stories being told in this first episode are radically different because they are fulfilling different storytelling needs. It could be said Green with Evil Part 1 is far more about Rita than it is about the Rangers. She witnesses a karate tournament match between Jason and Tommy, a new kid in school. The match ends in a draw, establishing Tommy as an equal to the best fighter the Power Rangers have. Well, you know, until they're morphed and are magically imbued with equal martial arts skills. And the real kicker is he already wears green clothing! She is convinced that she has found the perfect candidate to become her Green Ranger. Rita tests this by sending a squad of putties against him. Honestly, as much of a Jason fan as I've always been, I'd be willing to argue this potentially sets Tommy far and above what we've ever seen Jason accomplish. We have never seen a Power Ranger single-handedly take out a whole team of putties at this point in the series. Rita then kidnaps him, throws him into some very obvious Zhu Ranger footage of Barai awakening from his sleep, and says some crazy incantations. Now she has brainwashed him into becoming her evil ranger. He knows the identity of all the Power Rangers, but they don't know who he is. These are very different setups. On one hand, we have a mysterious antagonist with no ties to the main villain. And on the other, we have a good person under the direct control of the main villain. As such, the Tommy Hameha fight scene at the end reads very differently. In Zhu Ranger, this is the character's introduction. In Power Rangers, it represents the culmination of Rita's evil machinations throughout the episode, machinations that we have witnessed. Since Tommy's established long before this sequence, we're not shocked by it. Instead, we anticipate the Power Rangers walking into this trap. The footage is largely the same, but it amazes me how differently they function, just with different context. Since Barai himself only appears at the end of the episode, the only thing we learn about him directly is that he refers to himself as the Yamato Tribe Prince, which is weird because that's what Geki is. Because he has a larger role in this first episode, Tommy is far more established as a character than Barai is, which is ironic given that who Tommy is as a character is entirely irrelevant to this storyline. He's simply a mindless, brainwashed husk for most of it. That said, he's not established as much more than a reasonably nice guy. None of the heroes really get to know him in any appreciable way. Instead, he seems to have two nerdy friends already who were never seen again. But he is set up as a rival for Jason, and Kimberly immediately develops a crush on him. He stands up for Kimberly against Bulk and Skull, but I kind of feel like that outburst would make his classmates think he's completely insane. That's pretty much all we get about him for a while, since the rest of the story is not actually Tommy at all, but just evil in a Tommy suit in a Green Ranger suit. He's a nesting doll of evil. Like with Barai, I question where Tommy's powers come from. How does Rita have her own power coin? Where did she get it? How does it work? Why has she never used it until now? Look, I know my teasing about the powers doing all the work is simply an unintended consequence of the mismatch of the footage. I don't believe that's the concept they're running with. So I understand Rita waiting until she's found a warrior with the potential of defeating the Power Rangers. Although, you know, Goldar? But here's the weird thing. The other benefit of Rita's power coin is that it grants its user the ability to enter the command center. She sends Tommy there so he can cut off Zordon and Alpha from the Power Rangers and wreck their base of operations. So how does she have a power coin that can do that? Did Zordon really create a lock that could be opened by any key? That's insane! But it's even more insane that Rita didn't use it on day one! She doesn't have to pick a gifted martial artist to do that! She could give it to anybody in her evil forces and cripple Zordon almost immediately. Then she could worry about finding the perfect warrior to defeat the Power Rangers. Oh, I guess she also needs to wait for the perfect moment wherein Zordon is conducting maintenance and orders Alpha to recharge himself. Yes, that is an absolutely astonishing coincidence that allows Tommy to not only enter the command center without setting off any alarms, but to also momentarily avoid being physically spotted in this tiny room. And then for some reason Zordon knows Tommy's name? Tommy, she has you under an evil spell. I don't even want to know how that makes sense. 
If he has been monitoring the situation up until now, this should be a huge code red, not, well, time to defrag the computers. All of that aside though, I think this is a really good idea. Zhu Ranger's telling of this is going to be focused far more on an interpersonal conflict. Since Power Rangers largely discards that aspect, they replace it with the Power Rangers having to function without Zordon and Alpha aiding them, without knowing who infiltrated their lair, and without the ability to teleport. Sometimes. While they can't teleport to the command center and have to make use of the rad bug, they can magically jump into Zhu Ranger footage that takes place nowhere near them. Yeah, wow. But this is a raising of the stakes far beyond what Power Rangers has ever done. It creates a pretty chilling effect to see an enemy running amok in the previously secure command center. It's violating. It leaves the Rangers feeling helpless. While the Zhu Rangers are going to encounter terrible hardships as well, their home is never infiltrated by the Dragon Ranger. Well, both shows do get this awesome moment of the new guy breaking into their giant robot and punching them out of it. That's pretty awesome. And that moment packs more of a wallop in Zhu Ranger since it's literally the first thing we see Barai do, shattering all illusions that he might be a new ally. The Command Center sabotage certainly exists for a greater purpose within the storyline. But in terms of this specific episode matchup, it replaces much of the footage of Barza and Gnome attempting to stop Ryota from awakening Barai. And to that I say good, because all of that sucks. So we have Ryota, who is the grandson of Gnome. Remember him from Terror Eaten in an Instant? Well, he's back now and living a normal life as a forklift operator, and keeps a magical key to Barai's tomb under his floor. But while Ryota insists to the Zhu Rangers that Barai should be awakened, Barza and Gnome heavily disagree. Very. Heavily. Disagree. In fact, they go absolutely bonkers, straight up homicidal, trying to stop this kid from getting anywhere near Barai. And that forms the crux of the mystery aspect of this episode. Why wouldn't they want a sixth ranger? Why are they acting like this? It doesn't make any sense! But that's also the problem. It doesn't make any sense! This is a mystery for the sake of a mystery. Hey, you dumb old geezers! You don't want Barai to be awakened? Well, maybe you should tell someone why! That would be so much easier than trying to impale a child on a forklift or lobbing grenades at him! This is so over the top, I can't even begin to take it seriously. And fair enough. This is a relatively silly show. But it's so dim-witted that how over the top it is really highlights how simple it would be to clear up. There are a few lazy writer tropes I hate more than a conflict that only exists because characters don't talk to each other for no good reason. Look, I know that there is a reason they promised not to talk about it. I'm even going to put aside that the risks outweigh keeping that promise. And they really do. But you don't have to tell the Zhu Rangers everything. You just have to say, hey, he's evil. That's it. Or you could be more proactive and have avoided this situation in the first place. You've had 170 million years, Gnome, to explain Barai to your grandson. If Ryota understands, then he won't be attempting to awaken him. Even if you can't bring yourself to do that, if you suspect your grandson is planning to awaken Barai, maybe call in sick to your forklift job on the one day of the year it's possible. Or bring the key to work with you. This is not hard, people! No, just try to murder your own grandson. That's much easier and not at all going to attract the attention of the Zhu Rangers and make them question whether they should take your side. And I'm not letting you off the hook either, Ryota, you little dumbass. You said Awakening Barai was the only means of defeating Bondora. Well, hey, guess what? When Bondora's henchmen start intervening on your behalf and encouraging you to open the door, maybe you should rethink your choices. You want to know exactly how contrived this all is? This whole episode is driven by Ryota. Oh, I just want to see my friend again. Oh no, how could my friend betray me? After all that, he appears on camera in the next episode for all of 10 seconds. He says nothing and does nothing to the point where I didn't even notice he was in the episode until I went back to check. Then he is never seen again. Not in this storyline, not in the entire series. His relationship with Barai has no follow-up. He exists for no other reason than to get Barai out of the cave. After he accomplishes that, after he cares about Barai so incredibly much, he is whisked away to the cornfields. 
In the greater context of the story, Zhu Ranger adds some dimension to the villainy by not immediately tying Burai to Bondora. Power Rangers drastically simplifies the conflict, no question. But I honestly cannot blame them when most of what happens in this first episode is so completely pointless. Gnome has just enough of a role next time to help deliver Burai's backstory. After that, he's never seen again either! I already thought Gnome felt unnecessary as a character when he was first introduced. This episode goes out of its way to confirm those feelings. It is pretty amazing to me how much of the Zhu Ranger footage is recontextualized for Power Rangers. I've already pointed out the bigger examples such as the fight at the end, and how Burai's awakening is used for Tommy's brainwashing. But there are a few miscellaneous examples of things I noticed. In the sixth hero, Bondora sends out her forces to impede the Zhu Rangers, Barza, and Gnome from stopping Ryota. Gryphazar being made to grow serves as a further distraction. The Zhu Rangers have to leave that battle to fight against him. Gryphazar only leaves once Barai has been awakened and the distraction is no longer necessary. In MMPR, the Power Rangers have just found out the command center has been destroyed, only to see Goldar on the rampage. Rather than pulling them away from the Green Ranger, this is a trap to draw them near him, which I thought was done pretty well. There is a brief shot in the Dragon Ranger fight that I'm guessing Saban thought was a little too brutal. I suppose it could have just been cut for time, but this shot of Barai holding Goshi in place and hitting him a few times was left out. Finally, I have to give Power Rangers major credit for this one. The Zhu Ranger episode opens with Bondora praying to the devil and making incantations, which makes for a pretty spooky start to the episode. You know something's going to go down. But when all is said and done, it just ends up being Bondora finding Ryota with her crystal ball so she can say, Hey, he's gonna do something important. This almost feels like the reverse, as if this segment was made for Power Rangers and had to be forced into the Zhu Ranger plot, because this makes far more sense and carries much more weight in its reused context of Rita creating her Green Ranger. So MMPR does a much better job than usual of writing around their Zhu Ranger footage. But they also shoot a surprisingly large amount of original content this time, and it's not just the teens in the juice bar. Rita appearing to Tommy is the first instance I've noted of Saban shooting American Rita footage. I'm fairly certain this is not from Japan. The performer doesn't look quite like Soga Machiko, although you have to look carefully to notice. Another giveaway is that the footage appears to have been shot on video instead of film. They do a pretty good job of blending this in. Less convincing is their original Green Ranger footage. It's something everyone's made fun of for decades, I have nothing new to add to it. But MMPR footage of the Green Ranger is really easy to distinguish because of its saggy, wrinkled cloth shield. Compared to the original Dragon Ranger shield, it just looks pathetic. I also freely admit it's something that I never noticed as a kid. Interestingly, since Power Rangers uses American Green Ranger footage earlier than Zhu Ranger footage, the American shield is seen for most of the episode before the superior Japanese shield makes its way in. Maybe that ended up being to its advantage. Can't be disappointed by it if you haven't seen anything better. So those are the first episodes of the Sixth Ranger storyline. For what it's worth, let's score them as individual episodes. They're both really good, and they both screw up. They're very different, but both use the footage to satisfy an effect. For story, I have to go with Green with Evil. Mystery plots are good, and Zhu Ranger wants to shock its audience with Barai before explaining him, but that the mystery is so ridiculously contrived hurts it a lot. Most of this episode feels like a waste of time because of that. Power Rangers lets the cat out of the bag far earlier, but it's a better cat and a better bag. For characters, that's a bit harder. We learn more about Tommy, but like I said, it barely even matters. The sixth hero is far more situation-driven than character-driven. Ryota definitely has a compelling motivation to see his friend again, Rita is amazingly proactive and raises the stakes, and in terms of Burai, less is actually more. He's a shock, a twist, he makes us want to know more about him. I'm just going to give this category a tie. They have different goals, but they both accomplish those goals. Finally, for action, I can't deny that some of those military shenanigans are filmed well. Ryota has some amusing wire work, and the forklift scenes are shot in such a way to really sell this as something dangerous. That said, Tommy's infiltration of the command center deals a much more emotional blow than any of the footage it replaced, so I'm giving it to Power Rangers, which means, at least in the context of this first episode, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers wins. But there is still much more of this epic storyline to go. We'll see if it manages to hold its edge once Zhu Ranger really lets loose. Thank you so much for watching! 
Check out my convenient playlist of all my videos comparing Power Rangers and Super Sentai. You know, it's not easy fending off the mind control of Empress Rita so that I can keep making videos for good instead of evil. It's thanks to patrons like these that I'm not stuck with a crappy cloth shield. If you're able to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. We have our own community, you can get early access to videos, and we just finished up a fun contest where I gave away two copies of a very nice Dragon Ball art book. With your help, I'm sure we can afford to rebuild the command center and get antivirus software for our robot buddy. See you next time! Thank you.